Hi everyone. So uh, very happy today uh, that we uh, at Cerebellum we have GRG sir, Spar sir, and myself, and we are talking to uh, Dr. Aditya who secured a rank six in INICT November twenty three. So heartiest congratulations, Aditya, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Aditya. Thank so, you. So can you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, sir, I'm uh, Dr. Aditya, and I uh, finished my MBBS this year from uh, Madras Medical College. And uh, in this November I said I've got all India rank six. Great, great. Uh, so how are you feeling? Uh, just now sunk in. A really great feeling that uh, leaving a seat and then uh, appearing for the exam paid off. So that was really nice. That's great. That's great. So what was your rank in uh, this May INICT? In May INICT, I got three fifty all India rank and. Uh, Neat PG, I got all India rank five thirty four, uh, but I left uh, those ranks behind and wanted to appear in nine nine because I thought I could do better and was happy that it ended. Mm, that's a brave decision to leave at uh, rank of five thirty. So that's a huge decision and uh, that paid off. Uh, and uh, bravo! Thank you. Congratulations, Aditya. So. Uh, how did you find the examination pattern of the current uh, INICET? I mean, it was a bit different from the traditional ones. Yes, so... sir. Actually, um, I never, ex nobody expected all this. Initially, when all those messages came in the groups, I thought it was fake. And I <laughs> did not want such a change to be true. And even I, I couldn't sleep for that night when that uh, news had come. So the next day only, I uh, thought that, okay, this can be a, you know, good thing. If you view it in a different way, they have done the time management aspect for us. Like they they have already created four sets by which you will not waste too much time on any question. Like there are some questions which are very, very difficult. And by this particular set of questions being given only for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, you will not waste one and a half, two minutes on all. You you, you can't even waste, even if you want, you can't waste two minutes on a question. So that way it is a uh, good thing if you look at it that way. But uh, it was a very big shock. So what so, were the uh, academic resources that you used uh, with respect to uh, the Cerebellum app, Aditya? If I can just sir, get to know. So with respect to Cerebellum, I had used the BTR. For revision purpose, I used BTR. Because uh, one thing what I found was I used, uh, already made my main notes and rapid revision notes uh, separately. That I did it uh, before. But what I found was uh, revision was not happening that well. Because they were slightly bulky and that I had made during my prof years. So, uh, and that time BTR and all was not there. So <laughs> I did not you know, I could not find a way to revise because my basics were strong because without revising, I could get 500 rank. So from 500 to coming to five or six rank is basically about revision and narrowing down the country, funneling down the country. So for that, BTR was very good. So, so if you talk about the specifics, you know, lots of students struggle in, in integrating and consolidating the main notes, a, a resource that they already have or are simultaneously doing and then bringing in BTR. So, so how were you able to integrate both of them and also manage, you know, uh, the END cycle or whatever we are doing with BTR? So how were you able to, uh, you know, do it all together and integrate? Ma'am, I actually started after August 15th with that ENT cycle. So it was the second cycle that I started with. Um, I had my main notes for most of the subjects, main or revision notes for the most of the subjects. And uh, for short subjects, I did only BTR. I did not use uh, other okay. notes at all. Um, for, but for major subjects, like Pharma, I had read the book itself. Kudhyaji's book also I had read. And like there are some subjects which you cannot just, you know, do something which is concise and, you know, yeah. like OBGY also, it's very important. So yeah. for those subjects, you read the main thing. Patho also, definitely Patho. Patho was like my favorite, second favorite subject. So I had done all these in detail. But when you want to come down and you have, suppose you say August 15th, you're starting. And you had given one uh, cycle till October 15th. I finished the cycle before. I finished it by October 1st. Because I knew like if I keep it only 15 days for revision or 20 days for revision, it's not enough. So yeah. all those ENDs, I just gave it, you know, with whatever I have completed, how much ever I've read it, I just, I just gave the END. And most of the ENDs, I used to come in the top five or 10. So I was happy that, you know, I'll definitely get a decent rank. And the way you schedule the exams, the gap you gave was very, you know, appropriate. I think more than ETR being, you know, a concise resource, uh, the way you structured the END cycle was, you know, that is what I found it to be even more effective. 
Right. Um, also, if we can talk about the grant test, a lot of students find that to be an issue. So, so you know, what was your approach? How would you analyze GTs? And what was your score curve like? Were you always at the top? Or, or how was your improvement curve like? Because you did start off with a very good rank. Your baseline ranks were really good. So, you know, where, how do you how did you proceed from there? Um, actually, um, I gave grant, I started giving grant tests in final year. And mm -hmm. uh, in that itself, I was doing very well. Uh, the thing was like when you start from there it's very difficult to improve so like when you start with 98 percentile 99 percentile it's like very difficult to improve because uh the dip i got in my grant test was during my internship because in internship we had zero time so whatever i grant test i used to write in internship it used to be not great so i stopped giving gt and then i wrote neat and then i said after that i started in you know july august at that time when i was starting in july uh, i again started GT. but then i noticed like you know, you can give once a month or twice a month, you can give GTs. But more important is giving GTs is analyzing them. And yeah. it's very difficult to analyze a GT. Like you give one, you give one GT in three hours. If you analyze even your incorrects and guesses, that itself will take five, six hours, at least four, five hours. So I thought that I'll give the one GT every two weeks instead of giving once every week or once in uh, three days or something. I, once in two weeks is enough and review it and last one month over. Last one month, I think I wrote your GT, the mega GT which you had conducted, and uh, one more GT I had given. Uh, so the, only two GTs in the last one. Right. And the, what were your number of corrects there? Uh, in your GT, I got 171, I think. Uh, <laughs> and the other one also, I got uh, 167, 170, around that. Okay. So I think here, what we have is an exceptional student who's, who's, you know, always done well. So this shows that, you know, your MBBS base was very, very strong. And, you know, when your concepts are strong, all you need is, is revision. And that is what yeah. you did very, very effectively. Uh, so, so it's very important to realize where you're lacking and, and work on that. So, so yeah. that is what is very evident in your journey. And that's probably why you've done so well uh, throughout I may add over here that uh, when we are talking to a student like Aditya, it feels that I'm in the company of three toppers actually. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Zainab is there, Dr. Aditya is there and Dr. Gobind is there. So Aditya, if, if you were to presume that you have to, uh, you know, guide an average student like me, two categories of students, I would say, a student who happens to be, let us say, in their med school as of now, let's say first or second year, and somebody who has now is about to finish their internship, let's say in December, and they have a plan to crack the INI of the next year, let's say, right? So for these two set of students, what do you think is should be the best approach? How to utilize the app effectively? How to utilize the grant test effectively? How to go about the schedule? I mean, what would be your guidance in such a scenario? The first category, you told first and second year. Right? First and second year, so I think they should not start off with, you know, coaching in first and second. At least first year, you should not start. Second year, you can. Not wrong. Second year, you can start. But I will still say, you know, read Catherine, read Robbins, um, read, uh, you know, good textbooks in first and second year. Because after that, I think how much ever you try, you can't read because all the other books are too big to finish. These books you can finish, but you can't really finish Harrison's. You can't finish, you know, something like Bailey. You can't, you can read them, but you can't finish them. But first and second year, you can finish the text. So you will have that confidence, you know, for me and all. The main reason why I was confident in first and second year, even though I used to get a lot of mistakes also, first and second year subjects, also they are very volatile. So in the end also, I used to make mistakes. But one thing I used to be confident is if a tough question comes, I can handle them because I've read text. So that confidence you will get only if you, you know, read textbooks in first and second year. That is why I think everyone says, many people say read first and second year textbook. And I also say that because, you know, if you don't read them now, you are not going to read them later. Never. You cannot pick up, um, you know, Robbins when you're studying for entrance. So that is for the first category of students. For the second category of students who are just going to finish internship and then, you know, uh, prepare for the next year's I and I. If they have one year, then read everything in detail. You can use main videos, main notes, uh, you know, go at a stretch, read all subjects in detail. But if you don't have one year, you have four months, six months, then prioritize your subjects. You, you know, you know what are the high yielding subjects. You know that second year subjects are high yielding. OBGY is high yielding. And then short subjects, if you, you know, combine them and uh, say it as one subject, then it's still high. So do all these subjects in detail. Don't, uh, you know, uh, read all the subjects, you know, from the main videos or main rapid revision. Even rapid revision videos also, if you do for 19 subjects, it's not enough. Four months, it's not enough. So do the important subjects in detail. Other subjects, you can cover it from BTR or any revision source you're using. And 
Vishal said, "Look, so I feel we are very, you know, sufficient for even INICB is sufficient because Vishal said, 'Look, it's like if you know it, you get the answer. It's not like uh, something out of the blue they are going to.'" Right. So I think if we talk also about the exam giving strategy per se, so if you have to dissect the paper, you know, most of the times uh, INICT will give you papers where you know the topic, the topics are going to be familiar, but the options are so tricky, wherein two will seem very close and two will seem very correct. And, and you know, a half, half, if I have to, maybe I'm exaggerating, but half of the paper is like that, you know, uh, a lot of times. So how did you go about that? In that moment when you're sitting, when two, you know, you've ruled out one option, you left with three. So, so you know, how, how how do you go about that? Um, actually, what I feel was this time the paper was uh, not difficult. Mm -hmm. This is more of like a paper where it was, you know, close between the options. The question was you have to, you know, take that extra 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Just, you know, stay calm and focus and think from a practical point of view, which will be the most suitable one. That will solve 80% of such questions. Hmm. You know, just because two options seem correct, it's not going to be that both are correct. You have to select the most appropriate option. So correct. Uh, and what was your attempt like from every set? How many did you end up doing? Because, yeah, here you can't have a preconceived notion that I'm going to attempt more than 190. It's like you take it per set. So, so you know, from set to one, how, how was your attempt like? Uh, I actually uh, I attempted 191 totally, I think. 190 or 191. And uh, the reason was conscious. This was a conscious reason to leave nine questions because uh, my guessing skills are very bad. So I knew that if I guess, then it's going to take me back. So I think uh, that. So Aditya, what you are planning to take? So as of now, I'm planning to take general medicine. Uh, then... right. But uh, with the time, it will change to radiology? <laughs> no, sir. I'm As of now, it's not yet changed. Just considering options are not uh, fully. Definitely. I yeah, think a lot have... of people would also be uh, very eager to know that, uh, I mean, especially post the INI CET result declaration, there are people who uh, have done exceedingly well like you, right? There were people who were expecting a better rank, but for some reason they could not make it. And those are the people who might be having the issues of something like a self doubt or some kind of an anxiety. So what is going to be your suggestion slash advice to them for the upcoming NEET PG exam? Sir, I think one first main thing is that NEET PG is a very doable exam. That they have to take it in their uh, mind, first of all. It's not like INIC. NEET PG is uh, an easy one. And even if they've not gotten a good rank in INICT, I feel that three and a half months to go for NEET PG is more than sufficient to start afresh also. Even if they have not qualified, they can get a good rank. because. You know, you have to ultimately um, do all the subjects at least once and revise them once. That is the main thing. If you are you are able to do more revisions, that will just, you know, you know, be a more additional advantage. But it's not ultimately needed. Like I, must, I myself did only one revision fully and the other revision was just because last seven days you have to revise and that kind of revision. So it's not very much essential to do three or four. Revisions. If you can do it, you can do it. Otherwise, if you can cover all the subjects in detail, it's more than enough uh, to crack neat PG where the questions are easier, seats are more. So that itself should be a very positive uh, mindset to attend. Another thing I, I, I had a query about Aditya was the fact that uh, I have two of the people who are the academic directors or at Cerebellum Academy as well. So these are the very people who will decide the kind of uh, END schedules, the tests, the level of the questions and all that stuff and which classes are to be kept for the live sessions. How do we help a student out. Now, my question to you is that, uh, let's say I'm starting off with my internship and I have good 10, 11 months with me. Uh, on one hand, we say that we are dealing with adult learners. So we presume that uh, the people who are appearing for any kind of an exam have the maturity to make their own timetables. The other is I rely upon totally the timetable made by uh, people like Zana Ma'am and Gobind sir and trust them blindly and follow whatever they are letting me know. So. Uh, as a student, which is a better approach for me? Should I make a timetable for myself knowing that these are my strong and weak subjects or for such, uh, you know, uh, I will do the questions later or or should I just follow the timetable given by people like them? Sir, I think this has two answers. This question has two answers because it depends upon the type of internship you have. If you have an internship which is like very chill, you can avoid going to certain postings, then you can make your own timetable. But for me, I never had such an internship. Mine, every single day was very hectic. So we never got time to study. 
so if you don't have any schedule if you don't have time to study then try to do passively what you know sir or ma'am is telling like ma'am will make some schedules sir will, sir will also make a schedule for that particular subject you need to give those many days if you can't cover a subject in those many days like if you have a hectic internship you can't cover it use the buffer days to cover that subject if you still can't cover it like my internship i could not do it literally not much so in that case it's okay it's not going to be a last attempt like internship attempt for many people it's not the best attempt like very few people actually get through their internship attempt so don't take it to your heart uh, whatever you are not able to complete you can do it either in your buffer days or you can do it in the next cycle i think uh, both ma'am and sir will have another cycle depending upon when the exam date is so based on that you can modulate your schedule and uh, if you have a relaxed internship then it's up to you, you can schedule it any way manage but isn't it going to be then uh, uh, you know are they then are we not going to be in a situation wherein the parkinsons rule is going to be chipping in if your internship is too light i mean uh, people tend to become too relaxed and they may not be still yeah. able to finish a subject yes sir in that case i think yeah it, it depends upon the personality of that individual also like if you know that you are going to be chilling <laughs> if your internship is relaxed then don't do that you stick to your schedule because ultimately if you have an uh, you know easy internship why do you waste it you get your seat in this attempt itself and then move ahead So in that case, follow any schedule. I mean, ma'am and sir, I think both their schedules are really you know, good to follow. And if you stick to it, I think any schedule will definitely be a high yielding and will provide you the result that you need. All you need is that you should be dedicated and uh, you should not, you know, find shortcomings which is already being provided to you on a platter. That is very. So absolutely agree. So I to advise everyone that uh, every individual is different. So try to make your own schedule. But if you have problem sticking to your schedule or you are not able to make a proper schedule, then we are here for you. Exactly. I think uh, just to summarize what what Aditya, uh, uh, you know, what I can guess from your journeys, uh, what shines out is your confidence in your own self. I think that is something which is very very evident that throughout you've been a very confident person in your own resource, in your own content, in your own mental ability to to give exams. I think that is something that is uh, that is one of the big reasons of why you've done consistently so well, and that is what the learners have to take that you know have confidence in your own self first, and secondly in what you are doing. You know make sure that you are not getting questions wrong from whatever you are doing you know stop questioning and doubting your content every minute and you know switching from one thing to the other just have faith in what you are doing and and your own abilities and and it will happen you know how how it has happened for him uh, after a hectic internship in practically uh, you know uh, a month you have uh, given uh, neat you have given mains and you have done very well i mean i would say those attempts were also very very good and then you have taken it up a notch to leave a seat at that rank is also a very uh, dicey situation and that requires a lot of confidence again that you know i am going to do it and i'm going to do it better that is an even uh, riskier situation if i may so so you've done that and and kudos to you and we are so so proud of you and so happy for you uh, dr aditya thank you so much thank you and i really appreciate the way btr schedule was made like it was very very comprehensive and sir's pharmacology and sir's pathology so everyone knows i don't need to say anything BTR has become very popular. I think everyone now <laughs> knows about BTR, and so it's now like every second person knows about BTR. So it's very nice to have a uh, talk with all of uh, all the great faculty. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you and congratulations, Aditya again. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations Thank again, you. Aditya, and please do extend our warm wishes to your family members as well, especially your parents. I think uh, they have also. A, an equal if not a bigger role to play in our success definitely yeah. definitely please do extend our heartfelt wishes to them as well definitely thank, thank you thank you thank you